Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including the Quantum Zone, this, that, or the third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. Hi, this is Dan Jurgens, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a electric bullet. Uh, a bunch of robots. Anyway, welcome back to another episode of Electric Mullet. One, one of your favorite Superman podcasts. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is, well... I think he likes Superman, Mister Thomas Patrick. <laughs> just a little, just a little bit, Phil. Just a just little, just a I mean, little bit. Just, just Chris enough, Chris. you know. Yes. And also, leader of the Owl Patrol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just in the Owl, swooping back into Metropolis and Kansas City. I would, I would read the Owl Patrol comic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Be like, I would, I'm for it. <laughs> Who would be on that team? Who? <laughs> Who? Who? Uh, well, the world, there's Al Man. There, there, there's Al Guy. There's mm. uh, Al Dude. Doctor um, Midnight. Ho- there's Hootie. Doctor Midnight and Hootie. What about so. what about Al Bundy? <laughs> <laughs> now that's a secret identity. His name is Al. Uh, uh, oh, that'll be that'll be great. Yeah. So yeah, all good right. Good to have so, you yeah. guys. So yeah, we're talking three episodes or three three issues tonight. Adventures of Superman four forty three. Some what WTF? Uh, <laughs> Doom Patrol <laughs> number ten, <laughs> which leads into Superman number twenty, and. I think they I think they were trying to scramble to cover the Lana Lang timeline in those, but we'll get to that. Mm, yeah. Oh, there's some hasty editorial decisions that took place, it seems like. Yes. All right. So uh oh, before we uh get started on those, so um I don't know if you're reading Justin, but Tyler, are you reading current like current Superman and stuff? Uh mm-hmm. House of Brainiac. Yeah, I'm only behind oh. Um, on like the specials, I haven't read the the special uh-huh. that came out, but I read the Superman issue and the Action Comics issue. I've been yeah, yeah. I, I hate I hate to say it, but like I haven't been buying new comics as much because since our and since our shop closed and I have to like drive you know mm. forty minutes and I'm like then I'm only picking yeah. them up maybe once a month, and I'm that just like a hassle. Yeah, I've just invested. In, you know, I have the Ultra on my app and. The only new comics I've really been buying is Solomon, um, the Godzilla and Justice League books for Solomon, uh, because he, uh, you know, he just started his own Godzilla podcast. Nice and um, very nice. You know, so I, I've been doing that, but it's just, it's just, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Where I'm just kind of like, um, I hate not being caught up, but mm. I over the weekend, like I did a lot of reading just on Saturday. And I told Janine, I was like, I have read over eighty dollars worth of comics that I probably would have looked at buying. So here is value in this app. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. But See, I, I just, yeah. I'm just like, you know, like there's stuff I do want to buy. Don't get me wrong. Like when they mm-hmm. release House of uh, uh, Brainiac, like the trade, I'll buy that. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, yeah. And there's certain things I'll yeah. buy in trade form. I still want to keep right. up with them, but yeah. And of course, one event rolls into the other because that's going to roll into absolute power this summer. So, yeah, with Amanda Waller, Brainiac, and uh, Failsafe, because of course, Batman has another uh, uh, backup plan that ran, ran amok. So, yeah, imagine that. Hmm, imagine Batman created an alternate uh, personality, and then that oh, personality yeah. not only ran amok, oh. but uploaded itself into a robot. Hmm. Lovely. Zern mm-hmm. R uploaded himself into the failsafe. Is it called now. Brother I? Not this time. Okay. Wrong decade. You know, 
I just I just feel like every <laughs> writer who does Batman has their thing they want to do, and it's also like, hey, I know you just did something similar to this, but I think I can do it better. Yeah, I think I can do it, do it and different. Yeah. And I'm gonna do this now. Mm-hmm. Well, and again, feel- again, it's the it's, again, it's the Frank Miller effect. It's like, well, how dark and greedy can we make Batman? Yes. How? Yeah. Much it's like, were you reading the Brave and the Bold? The new mm-hmm. one that when they did the Donna DC Brave and the Bold. No. Like that book was pretty dark, you know, and like to me, the Brave and the Bull was always like more lighthearted. Mark, Mark Wade one? No, 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 no that's no. World's finest. Yeah, no, Brave and oh, the Bull World's was basically finest. like an anthology book. Yeah, right. But, but it, it's it had it's different been, writers. This the new one's oh, been really yeah, dark. It's, it's been boring. it's been weird. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah, again, it's the Frank Millerization. <laughs> <laughs> Your Uncle Scrooge is a whore. Well, oh, jeez. But we're here to talk about Superman books. Yes, That's right. So let's a get trifecta. Off this, let's get off this Batman. Batman, my favorite character. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, this is brother Inus. I have two little and one no synopsis. So yeah. Oh, all right. I have to walk these through. All let's right. do this. All right, so we'll start with Adventures of Superman 443 from August 1988, Prisoner of Conscience. Uh, Mm -hmm. Writer Jerry Ordway, penciler John Statema, inker Doug Hazelwood, colorist Juliana Ferretter, uh, letterer Albert DeGuzman, and editors Mike Carlin and Renee Witterstatter. Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen head to Quark to cover a hostage situation only to discover an underground secret society of aliens. Yeah. Because that made <laughs> total know. sense. Yeah. At first I was yeah. like, I was trying to remember this story. I was like, wait, this isn't the circle, is it? Okay, no, it's not the circle. It's something else. Yeah, okay. that's what I thought too, because this was my first time reading this issue. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, is this the, the circle, like a holdover from that or a continuation of this? Because it seemed like last time we saw the circle, that was like a finite ending for that. Oh, yeah. They're just like, hey, we need to get to our other dimension here. Superman, hold yeah. my hand. Okay. We're yeah, going. hold my hand. Bye. And then this happened. But then they have a little mention in this story about the circle. There's like one line where it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. Because like so... I wonder if this was because Jerry Ordway wrote this mm-hmm. and he was the penciler on the circle stuff. So I wonder if that was a story that he had in his back pocket associated with the circle. Mm-hmm. And Maybe. then for editorial reasons, they made him kind of turn it into his own thing, which was separate. But yes, this one opens up with Clark and Jimmy in their hotel room. Uh, in the middle in the middle east I, I i love how jimmy's mother thinks metro reporting in metropolis is too dangerous but this will be no problem okay yeah, of course it won't well he does i say mean she, i guess she, she still had another she, she really wasn't thrilled with this either but i'm just like okay i mean it was just it was pretty crazy just because the whole fact that like you said we did go with all the the jimmy stuff but like i i like this book when it started I'd like, you know, back to Superman kind of being, you know, Clark's investigating and he's trying to hide the Superman and not let Superman get in the way and being really into a real conflict and something where the presence of Superman could be an issue. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that that didn't last long. Uh, Yes, as they're staying at the hollow way in. (laughs) I was just like, it was so weird <laughs> how they like went into the sand. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's so strange. Yeah, there's a lot of problems with this story because they're looking for that missing reporter, uh, and then like the guy who drives them to meet with these terrorists gets gunned down, and uh, the guy with super speed is completely taken by surprise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the guy who was like, he was one like. He was one of them, and they killed him in cold blood. I know. And but Clark's just literally has his hands on his head. Oh, blast! I was so busy looking for Canfield, and it's just like, 
Yeah, uh, you, you shouldn't have been like, um, aren't you super fast or super something? I mean, come on, like, I mean, it was I, a little. I get he's trying to keep a low profile, but I'm like, you would think I wanted to be able to, well, again, faster than a speeding bullet. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. able to not suck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, I mean, the guy got, like, I know he's trying to cover, but, like, we've seen plenty of examples, even in this run of Clark doing stuff at super as Superman while mm. still trying to maintain cover and not let anyone see him. I mean, how yeah. a quick burst of breath and can he just, like, knock those bullets off course or something? You know, just like, oh, right. Oh, I missed. He hit the wall. Okay. <laughs> Sneeze mean, or something. <laughs> Sneeze yeah. in the general direction of the projectile. That's why I'm always like, it must be like, I mean, if you're trying to do a story like this, it's it might, it's kind of hard to maybe, well, certain aspects of the story, it's kind of hard to write Superman because it's like, well, why didn't he do this? Why did he do this? Well, that's all why I'm always like, well, you know, it's when someone takes the flash by surprise, I'm like, yeah, that should never happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But then Clark, oh, I'll take deal with these terrorists. You guys get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And, and then it, it just, man, this issue got weirder and weirder trying to give us this whole mythology and backstory of who these people were and what their mm. goals were and how they're like mixing themselves into a human. Hmm. Yeah, because like uh, for, yeah, they were like uh yeah, t like I guess the ancient uh yeah, the ancient people who worship them would like I guess basically die or bring their dead to this temple and then yeah, these aliens would like take over their bodies. Mm. Yeah, it was uh and it was it was it was so they could cross over cuz they can only cross over to our dimension like what for two days every 100 years or something yeah there was some weird limitation on all that yeah so let's just say that it was very convoluted and even me who loves science fiction and you know everything who usually can follow stuff was just still kind of like hey eh? yeah it, like, i mean what? i think they were trying to go for like a kirby vibe with you know with jack kirby mm -hmm. vibe this yeah that's kind of, of the this. feeling that i got yeah. too i, got, I felt I like it a was a little bit of that I kept I kept thinking of the time frame and like are they trying to like rip off Masters of the Universe? Are they thinking they can pull mm. off some sort of like That's oh He Man's idea. cool? Let's uh let's do He Man. So I, I don't know. It just it felt very weird. Well thank thank God we didn't see Fisto in this issue. <laughs> <laughs> It would have probably felt right at home. <laughs> yeah. uh, around the same time period. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. Oh, uh, all these uh, all these Masters of the Universe references are all current because Noel Tate's been dropping all those uh, memes. Oh yes, those, I love that. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. The whole. Like, you can't say you can't. You didn't get your text. To, Text no uh number of words uh per you know your money's worth in this issue because right just the there's retelling a lot of, their of story, story in this yeah yeah there's a it lot was of story it was in this. dense and once again it felt like they took two different story ideas and shoved them together yeah 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 like hey I got this idea for these people well you know what uh we have this. Superman needs to go to the Middle East, but that's current hot topic. We can't talk about that. You're right. Um, just have it turn into these alien people. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, at first Clark's like, yeah, I don't want to be spotted because, you know, I don't want to repeat what happened the last time I came, you know, Superman came to Quark. But then, you know, the, the minute he gets out of that building, pff, yeah, he's Superman. Yeah. Yeah. And then he talks so much about, like, they call it the Matrix, you know, and I don't want to spoil anything, but we're about to. Go into this conversation with uh, Superman, yeah, and, like, uh -huh. and then it doesn't even Matrix, yeah, you know, it doesn't We're even connect that way more next week. <laughs> you know, so it doesn't even connect. You know, and that's what I was kind of thinking. Like, oh, is this something? Like, you know, it's been a while since I've read more of that style of Supergirl, other than like what happened around the death of Superman. 
So <clears throat> I was trying to remember some of her origin more. And I'm uh, like, is this it. something that ties into it? And then I was like, no. nope, not nope. at all. Nope. Again, next week. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole origin is very weird. I'm like, yeah, we, and they mentioned the circle. I'm like, oh, is that circle going to be a big part? It's like, no, nah, some wanderers, that some wanderers called the circle, kind of like took attention from us. It's like, okay, it There's just kind of feels like this was going to be something that didn't pan out. Yeah, mm. mm-hmm. yeah, it felt like it was this. It should have been the start of something, maybe a story that was going to be continued for a few issues. Right, and then this became the the next one and done. Mm. Maybe that's like another. Maybe that's another thing too. Maybe this was gonna be this issue and next issue, but then next issue turns into it crosses over. Uh, Adventures four forty four crosses over with Superman twenty one and twenty two for that whole all the matrix matrix thing we're gonna get next episode. Oh, right, so right. Maybe they were planning this for two issues, and they're like, no, that's part of a crossover. We need it. Okay, never mind. Exactly. No, I, I don't know. I'm saying like I just because again, yeah, this this issue seems very packed. Yeah, it, it was my least favorite of um, mm. what we read. Me yeah. too. And I was disappointed where it was my first time reading this. I thought I might actually like this a lot, and I liked the some of the artwork. I like um, John Standema his artwork mm. a lot I, I'm, he's done some other stuff that i was really keen on i think this is some of his more early artwork so i was looking forward to that too but yeah well, the story yeah. the story i just couldn't get into it i just couldn't get into it I look, was how many into words it. Are, look how many words are on that page <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like i love backstory like i love a good like here's the history kind of backstory lesson yeah. in a book and i honestly was like i could care less in this yeah like I'm not invested. Like I felt like I was reading a serious story mm. that Superman was mm. part of, of having to deal with a conflict, you know, in the Middle East. That's old as time. Yeah. And what the, what the hell is it? Star, this. What is the Stargate? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> then they're like, we're gonna we're gonna make it like Stargate. But no, seriously, look at that. Look at all the words on that page. That's yeah. Like, that's like two issues worth of Bendis. Uh, come on. <laughs> Bendis. That's like a Doug Mensch script. It is crazy. I will say, like reading this, and then reading some of like the newer comics, where mm, literally such a difference, isn't it? One one panel of this book is like three pages worth of works in some of the yeah. newer comics. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild. Oh yeah, because again, this is kind of like the end of the era where they're just like, oh yeah, let's like let's let the writing sell this thing, and that you know, once we get to the nineties, it's like, yeah, we got some guys who draw pretty good. We could sell off, off of just uh, just some pretty pictures. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just and then like we have the whole. How do you pronounce? How would you pronounce her? Thea, Thea, uh, yeah, and well, her brother. Like it just, I don't know. It just felt like a lot. Oh yeah, because uh, because then it's like two. It's uh, you know they've been taking over dead bodies, but one of them's going to take over Jimmy. So it's like, oh well, it's probably going to kill him. <laughs> Hello, Noel, masters of the mean verse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Noel. Uh, but yeah, I, you know what? Tyler had did have a good point. Yeah, I could see the masters of the universe connection here. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that I think we were. Like you said, Justin, maybe they told maybe it was an idea for the circle or something. And we're like, yeah, that's, mm. it just seems like, why wouldn't we do the circle again? Why are we creating this whole new? Yeah. I mean, not that we got much on the circle, but it's like at least they're mm. already established. Yeah. It just seems like a weird diversion that mm. really didn't end up too much in the longer, in the long, in the grander scheme of things. Oh my God. And that guy, that guy does look like Skeletor. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. 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 This thing this this thing is a mismatch. Oh look, Transformers. I feel like this would have been a great story for an annual. Yeah, give it a little more page count. Uh have a bigger not... page count. Make this the only story for the annual, right? Yes. So there's yeah. no backups. Have this be the whole story, the whole sixty four pages, so that you can really flesh this out. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, this would have made a terrific annual. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, again, it could be. I've heard of that before where it's like, you know, something's going to go in an annual and ends up being two issues or vice mm-hmm. versa. So, yeah, could have been. All right. So <laughs> should we leave this one? Should we leave this one go? <laughs> Yeah, let it go. I, I think we can was, move on. I totally forgot I was <laughs> muted and never come back to it. I agree with the yeah. angle. I totally forgot I was muted. I was like, "What? What's yeah. going on?" Oh, it's okay. That's all right. I thought the the boss is in the room. I thought maybe yeah, yeah. I, I know. Go. <laughs> She's like, "I'm watching you." All right, so <laughs> what? All right, so yes, we're gonna get to uh, for part one of our two part crossover here Doom Patrol, vol- only volume two. Okay, number 10 from July 1988, The Soul of the Machine, writer Paul Kupperberg, penciler Eric Larson, inkers Gary Martin and Monica Livingston, uh, colorist Tom Zayuko, letterer John Workman, and editor Robert Greenberg. And there's no synopsis. All right. No, oh, lovely. Uh, so, Justin, you said you like the Doom Patrol, so are you a big fan of the Doom Patrol? I do. I love this incarnation of the Doom Patrol, too. The Paul um, Cooperberg mm-hmm. version doesn't get any love at all because the Grant Morrison version came on came along right after it, and everybody uh, completely immediately forgot about it after the Grant Morrison one. They're like, what? There was another Doom Patrol before Grant Morrison, really? So yeah. I, I have a lot of love for this because this was my introduction to the Doom Patrol back when I was a kid. The yeah. first... Um, I think five issues with the artwork by the wonderful Steve Lytle hmm. are some of my favorite things ever. I love that beginning of this series. It's so good. Um, I wish that Steve Lytle had stayed around longer because his art was so great for this book. But um, yeah, I, I love the Doom Patrol. They're, they're so quirky and so weird. And I felt like Paul Cooper really got kind of that weird, bizarre outsider vibe that the doom patrol was supposed to have all along Hmm. um yeah some of the eric larson artwork is kind of strange (laughs) yeah i just um this book was interesting mayor yeah again superman doesn't show up till like the end but yeah the the grin i was talking yeah that grin yeah that grin oh my lord and and I also refer to the Kansas City mayor, whoever he was, that was giving yes. the press interview. Um, you know, my my biggest thing with, with the Doom Patrol is like just you know knowing them from where they've appeared on other media and TV series. So like some of the characters, I didn't know who they were, um, mm. but I did like how they kind of brought they brought back Metallo, and it was yes. this very Terminator Metallo that we had talked about before. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We haven't seen since Superman number one. Right. And I like the idea that, you know, Cliff Steele kind of got this body parts. But then at the same time, I'm like, it doesn't look like what parts is he talking about? Because this body looks like it was built for Cliff, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah, it was just interesting to have this huge fight with Robot Man and, you know, Metallo. And the funny part is, like, you know, all I'm thinking about is like the TV shows. So I just keep hearing Brendan Fraser's voice in my head. Oh, yeah. Yelling, <laughs> yes. yelling the F word profusely. Oh, that's the funny. Yeah. Yeah, and and the fact that like, you know, this robot man actually is moving compared to like Brendan Fraser, who's like doing the robot, you know? Right. Um, constantly. So it was just kind of like, this is different. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not as familiar with this version of the Doom Patrol. I do remember seeing them like, uh, like when I, p- I picked up Invasion when it was out, and I was like, mm. oh, there's Doom, Boom, Doom Patrol. Like, I was still early on in comics. I was like, I kind of sort of knew the old Doom Patrol. I was like, oh, there's a new version of Doom Patrol? Uh, and Invasion was right when they killed off a bunch of the members of the team. Yeah. And after that, it was when Grant took over and it got rebooted. So, yeah. Yep. You know, I uh, I introduced the kids kind of to the Doom Patrol because there was an episode of Teen Titans Go we watched that had the Doom Patrol in it. And I was like, oh, mm. this is the Doom Patrol. Yeah, nice. Yeah. But I do, I do like, you know, even though the, the grin is creepy, 
but the 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 words underneath where i wish i was really as confident as i sounded but i didn't want to uh lana to worry mm -hmm. i did like that mm. now we, we just recently had this debate i'm gonna get you guys to chime in um mm. is it lana or lana yeah i always said lana I always think Lana. And I, I, it's, yeah. it's, Tyler, don't you say, don't you think in most media they call her Lana? Mm -hmm. Every now and then, they'll, like, someone will say Lana. Like, I've been yeah, rewatching the Superboy TV series, and he'll say Lana sometimes, or some people will say oh, it randomly. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, well, again, again, yesterday I was, I was a day late, but I was watching some Star Wars movies on uh, one of the channels was playing them, and, uh, you know, Empire Strikes Back was on, and uh, of course, you know, Billy D's calling him Han the whole movie. Han, Han, Han. Han yeah. yeah, Han. It's it's just one of those names. That. Like whoever says it out loud first is <laughs> is what will stay with you forever. I know. It'll, I'm it'll, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, I love you, Billy D. But do you not hear every other actor in this movie calling him Han? <laughs> right? Everyone he else. Like, yeah. He was like, I can't. He's like, I can't. It's just like a, you know, like Wonder Woman's mom, right? Oh, I've always heard Hippolyta. That's oh, how I always yes. say it. And I remember the yeah. first time I listened, Kevin Smith said Hippolyta. I was like, oh. <laughs> and I was like, ooh. I was like, oh. <laughs> but but then later I've heard people use that. You know, yeah, um, I've heard Hippolyta too. Yeah, 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 Hippolyta, Hippolyta from Thea's Mascara. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, or Dormammu instead of Dormammu. Like you know, stuff like you have these these names burn into your brain, and yeah. it's like so. I've always heard and said Lana, but you know, I've heard people say okay. Lana. And it's the for same for me. Cara, it's, Cara. Uh, for me, it will always be Thanos. Like everybody will always say mm. Thanos until mm. the end of time. Thanos. No, for me, it's always Thanos. Yeah. I mean, Lana is like a one thing, but it's like when it's a made up name, like Thanos or Dormammu, it's like, mm, yeah. 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 Especially if you haven't heard anyone actually say then that you know you were just reading it for years and all of a sudden you hear someone right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm saying whoever says it first, like the right. Rish, Raz, Al Ghul thing. Yeah. Yes. Is it Raz or Raz? Yes. Or Raz. So basically, I mean, yeah, yeah Clip Steel gets some bad uh, Metallo parts that were supposed to be from Metallo from LexCore. I don't know why anyone's trusting mm, LexCore. Yeah. Right, that that's his first too. mistake. Why I would mean, even... Lex? All right, so at this point, Lex is like screwed over basically every robot in the DC universe. Because again, <laughs> there's that thing with the with the metal men. The metal now, men. Now, now, uh, robot man's getting bad parts. So yeah. yeah, did he mess with Red Tornado? I don't. Well, I feel like he's next. I mean, this wasn't even intentional on Lex's part. This is just freaking Metallo. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Oh, did he say in here how he gets away from Lex? Because I mean, Lex had him. Lex ripped the kryptonite out of him. So I don't. I, don't think I feel does. like that might be in the next issue in the uh, Superman one. Maybe he's just like, ah, oh, he's dead. Let's throw him on the junk pile. I do like how I do like how much time that uh, Clark is spending with Lana. Mm. Oh yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that. Yeah, they're, it looks like they're going on a picnic, very Superman three ish. Right. Yeah. It's a good yeah. time. Oh, yeah. I... Superman 3, the greatest mm -hmm. movie mm -hmm. ever! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> oh, me and Lil well, said we might have to cover Superman 3 in January for on Charlie's birthday. Yes. Yes. Greatest piece of cinematic history! <laughs> <laughs> and yes, kid. And yes, kids. I, if there was anyone else who passed away, I would I would think twice before before doing the puppet. But I know Charlie would be mm. surprised he didn't suggest it before. <laughs> yeah. But yes, but keep but keep an eye on the on the uh, outfit Lon is wearing in this one, kids. But when we get to the oh next, yes, yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, some continuity errors here. I think I would have liked this issue more if there had been less subplot stuff and they had just focused more on number one, the Metallo stuff, oh. and number mm. two, the introduction of Clark and Lana at the end. I feel like that could have been put in elsewhere in the story, maybe in the middle, and it would have created a different momentum so that 
Superman's introduction to the scene wouldn't have been so, quite so abrupt. Yeah, he's all big on the cover, and again, I, I like that cover, but he's only in the mm -hmm. last three pages of this issue. Yeah, that's what I mean. It seems like it was hastily thrown in there at the end. Yeah. You know? It is interesting for to pick that issue as like your crossover point because mm. if you're someone who's like you know like us, we're reading Superman, mm. and we're now we're reading an issue of the Doom Patrol, and I'm like, I don't know who these characters are, what their dynamic is, or what really is going on. I'm just gonna get through it until I get to the Superman cross part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I. I, I I think they just use this again. Just, I mean, other people, other characters have already done it, but yeah, I think they're just using this to, you know, as like a sales boost, maybe because, mm. again, I think Superman again on the on the uh, back of John Byrne, the, Superman's selling good right now, so everyone wants the cross over right. with Superman at this point. I think that was exactly their tactic. They wanted to give Doom Patrol a boost because I don't think that it was doing well. I think it was probably doing pretty poorly, and they thought that it probably would give it a little shot in the arm if they had Superman in there. Because, I mean, literally, I mean, they could have just had the Doom Patrol fight Metalla. You guys right. ever noticed that all these uh, comics on the app never put the price the book was when it came out? Mm. Oh, know. they don't want to remind you. Yep. But I remember the 75 cents. Nice. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Go back to that yeah. pricing comics. Yeah. That, or like I said, the Golden Age was like right after this one. <laughs> they were a dollar, but there was no tax on them. Yes. You wanted, no three books, you wanted three books? Plunk down three bucks. Yep. That was the best. My weekly allowance was five bucks, so I was able to get five comics a week. It was smashing. Yes. Then, then they added the tax to all the paper stuff. Damn you, George H.W. Bush. <laughs> <laughs> I think it depended on what state you were in, though, because I, I didn't. I don't remember paying tax on comics still when I was in high school. I, I I didn't um, from the spinner rack because uh, I bought a lot of them from the uh, on base. And if you bought oh, stuff right. on base, they didn't charge you tax. Yes. Right. So right. the one spinner rack I used to buy a lot of books off of um, was at this like uniform shop that my dad would go to on Saturdays and stuff. Yeah. So I just, yeah, we didn't. Yeah. No, if I was going to the newsstand or the supermarket, damn. <laughs> What's well, a newsstand, Phil? <laughs> it's where they used to sell hey. magazines and newspapers, Tyler. What were newspapers and magazines? <laughs> I uh I found a payphone the other day. Oh outside. really? Oh nice. I was like I was like, wow. Yeah, I've seen a few around still too. Yeah. You get in trouble changing your clothes in there? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't one of the phone booths, so uh, I was like, oh no. Father, what is that? <laughs> it's an artifact of the past. Oh, believe me, I pull. I, 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 my, my son saw this comedian who did a thing like there was a time before Google, and we were all idiots. I'm like, no, son. He's like, Dad, do you remember before Google? I'm like, yes, we had these things called encyclopedias. We still really? knew stuff. Or you had to go to the yeah. library. Yep. Mm, library. It just took a little bit. It just took a little bit longer. Yep. Yeah. I remember having to go to the library to research a paper for high school. Yeah. Well, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Hours I spent there. I remember the funnest, some of the funnest times were just like, you know, you spent like a Saturday or Sunday just driving around to different comic shops, like back issue shopping. Now these kids can just jump on the internet and be like, oh, what issue do I need? I can grab by this one, this one. <laughs> I'll look it up on the app. Half the fun was the hunt. Yeah, that's true. These days. That's true. Damn kids and their TikToks. <laughs> yeah, look at you, little hellfire. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this. Is, yeah, Eric Larson's art is very stylish, like stylized, like mm. like I like his Spider-Man stuff. A little, you know, a few years after this, but mm -hmm. yeah, Spider-Man yeah. was good. Um, because he did have like cer certain like uh, model types for like characters, like you were saying, like the mayor, like yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing guys like that in Spider-Man stuff. Yeah. yeah, there were quite a few of those. And he has a thing for 
drawing just women's butts just in weird places. I just one one shot of Celsius. Yeah, right there. That's it. I knew what you're talking about. Yeah. There's an Eric Larson butt. There's one in every issue. That that Rhea, that lodestone. My God, I saw more of her ass than I have I think I've seen <laughs> of any female characters. Oh my god, the way he drew Mary Jane Watson and her oh, big yeah. Peg Bundy hair at the time. <laughs> Peg Bundy hair. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think Todd McFarlane started that started that. Yes, yeah. But Eric had had a ball with it. He had a ball with that Peg Bundy hair. Yeah. All right. So any other thoughts on this one or should we get to the last one? No, the last yeah. One. yeah the best one. one. I think this is the best one too. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, we actually get like Superman. I like the I like the cover too. Like just the cover's great. Yeah. You know, the and it, it, you know sometimes they do these type of covers or faces like they don't always line up. This lines mm. up pretty well with the uh, yeah. Robot Man, Superman, Metallo. It says it Men really of Steel. Well. Guest starring the Doom Patrol. Yeah. All right. So yes, Superman number volume two, number twenty, August nineteen eighty eight. Doom in the Heartland. Writer and penciler John Byrne, of course. Mm -hmm. Burn. Uh, <laughs> inker, inker is Carl Kessel and John Byrne. So yeah, so Byrne is also one of two inkers. Uh, nice. Get that money, kid. Colorist yeah. Petra Scotish. Uh, letterer John Costanza. <laughs> and editors Mike Carlin and Renee Winterstatter. All right, prepare yourself for a long uh, synopsis here. Superman and the Doom Patrol fight Metallo. Mm, nice, nice. It's like the other day. All right. We were we were reviewing uh, the Crisis on Infinite Earths two film, hmm. and I went to pull up the synopsis on IMDb. It was the exact same thing from part one, where it was like the Justice League fights the Anti Monitor. <laughs> I mean that's pretty nice. much what it was, but I was yeah, like, oh, all right. thank you. The multiverse. Yeah. <laughs> but here we go. Like, I like this one because I like you know, even though I kind of know what's going to happen, I like the mystery we're getting of Supergirl. Yes. Where she says, when she says, Martha, I don't understand. You were supposed to be dead, and then she says, Lex didn't mm. say anything about this. Like that's a lot of like what, huh? Who, what? Yeah, and, uh, it's a lot of mystery. Yeah, you know when we have Supergirl standing there, and um, I love when they pencil like and they color her legs blue. Oh. Like, yeah, you know, if, so that's there's a panel in here somewhere. But also, it's like uh, it's like open up that uh. The, the issue opens up. Lana seems to be wearing a different outfit. Which yes. Is mm, she changed. This is like what yeah. she, the other outfit was to be more like fun and appealing to Clark. This is just how she is when he's not around. Yeah. I mean, I mean that, uh, well, as we'll see, someone else is wearing that outfit and posing as Lana, but yeah, no, I was going to say that, that outfit from Doom Patrol 10, that's saying, uh, yeah, I want some more than some mm -hmm. butter jelly on this picnic. <laughs> <laughs> A picnic basket, boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. yeah. Because then yes, because and Lana seems uh, occupied with other things. Because it's like, oh hey, Jonathan, Martha, look, here's a super girl. Yeah, what's going on here? Mm. See, this was the problem that I had with this book, though. Oh, there's I a lot of stuff like, here too. Well, yeah, I felt like they should have opened it with the Doom Patrol stuff. Yeah, open it with the fight, and then have the the Supergirl subplot and the Lois crap and Cat and all that other stuff. I know. Have that it's... be like in between all of the other stuff. That's like, it's like your back it's like your cutaways, right? Like yeah. you know the yeah. main your through line is the Doom Patrol and Superman, and then you know you're cutting away into the other two. Even the Maggie Sawyer thing, you're just, it was just right. that felt That's very true. just like shoved yeah. in there. Um, yeah. Lois, once again, is a really, really redhead in this. But I'm jumping right yeah. to it, fellas. The Cat Grant and Jimmy Olsen panels here. I had oh, a screenshot yeah. that I dropped it in for um, James <laughs> and our, my buddy Brian. And he was like, you know what? If I was 18, I was yeah. Jimmy. Cat was like. Uh, and I'm just like, hey, you know what? I Because she's coming on to Jimmy hard, and she even throws the question about his mom. 
Yeah. Like, so your mom let you out today? Yeah. I'm just kind of like, you know what? I like the idea of Jimmy Olsen. I like the idea of Jimmy Olsen and Cat. I don't know why. Like, maybe that's what she needs. It's just a good, you know, honest man. I mean, she's literally throwing herself. She's laying on that desk in that I can't breathe outfit. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was intimidated. Yeah. Yeah. Of course he is. Yeah. He's Jimmy Olsen. Uh, he's totally intimidated. Cat got your tongue. <laughs> But I liked on the next page, like we have the, the the throwback where it's like Lana and them at the picnic, and then it mm. says, you know, and then we have the panel that says, "Want to know what happened between these two panels?" Yeah, oh, back and re- I thought that was really cool because I like oh, I'd never like seen that. that. Oh. I thought it was interesting. Like I'd never seen it in comics before. Mm. Um, I think they could have done a little bit better, like them being at the bottom of a page because, like we said, like it. You're kind of reading this now, like, wait, when's this taking place? Yeah. Um, yeah that is funny, too, because Lon is wearing the picnic outfit. So you're like, wait a minute. Does this happen before what we saw her, where we saw her in the beginning? But then when we see her in this outfit later, it turns out to be Supergirl because Matrix can shape shift. Right. And I'm just like, yeah. wait a minute. Wasn't she looking for Superman to ask for help? So. Mm-hmm. And again, this doesn't this doesn't help the timeline either because it's like we just saw Matrix with the real Lana and the Kents, so it's like, did that right. take place before you know before the yeah film? what's uh, yeah what's the timeline here? That's yeah. what I mean. Like the I feel like that should have opened up with the fight with the Doom Patrol and then yeah. have all this other crap put in afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it would have made the flow of this issue. It almost seemed, it almost seemed like Burn was you know even from like the last the, you know the last episode we did this one and then next mm-hmm. issue with the Supergirl stuff it seemed like Burn was just on a straight line to Supergirl and they're like no 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 you have to squeeze a Doom Patrol yes. in here you have to put this in here yeah like, oh god all right because they're doing yeah. number ten so you have to do it this month it's like oh, okay. mm-hmm. it is very confusing the whole like. Lana Supergirl Matrix thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. it just seems like, yeah, because it's like, it's, you know, when we get later where she's sitting there and it makes you kind of wonder, like, what did Matrix do with Lana? Like, I don't know. It's so Matrix with, you know, she says, the last thing is, I don't understand, but I'm going to, looking at Martha and Lana's there and stuff. And then the next thing we see is the setup for the picnic. And then if you just follow that through line, it's her, you know, flying away saying, so whether I am ready or not, it seems that the time has come for the world to meet Supergirl. Mm. And there's where they drew her leg blue, you know, and that's, that's it Mm. really um, until the end where she has blue legs again and she's flying above Superman. So, and again, mm. and again, it's like we should be getting to the Doom Patrol battle, but it's like we're already we're setting up so many plot points because like the Maggie Sawyer thing, I think that's setting up Baron Sunday, and yeah. then you know the Cat Jimmy thing, and then it's like even Allie the Copy Girl when Perry jokes of like, "Oh, do you live here?" She's like, "Ha, huh, yeah, I have a cot in the back." Yeah, no kid, she literally does. She's homeless. So. <laughs> Which it's like get to, I forget how long it like, is to get to that, but it's like you know he had his Superman book. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Put in the Doom Patrol tie-in because then you get. Oh, and then and then we got a page of we had the run over Brainiac's girlfriend, so he goes. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah. That yeah. too. I was like, what is that doing in here? That was weird. Because I, I I I had because at first I like had a double check. Like, wait a minute, is that the same girl that was talking yeah. to Harry? I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah, me too. I was I, like, wait a minute, who is this? And then I, oh yeah, okay. it's like you have two pages that are just kind of shoved in the Maggie yeah. Sawyer page. And then the one with Brainiac, I'm like, okay. And then, you know, we have the the ongoing battle with the Doom Patrol and Superman, you can tell. And then you have the rest of the Doom Patrol. And then there they are fighting. Um, you get the whole story with Metallo, like retelling his stuff. And mm-hmm. then. Right. And th- yeah, this explains, I think, yeah, how he got away from legs and all that. We, we see that he has all these other like robots that he's controlling and he's mm-hmm. controlling cliff and superman rips cliff's head off yeah that part was cool the fight was cool the part with the drones was cool i really love the battle 
And I love the way that John Byrne draws the Doom Patrol in this incarnation. It's great. Even with their wonky costumes. Yeah. And then they heat up and cool off Metallo. And... <laughs> My brain is on fire! And then he just hands over Cliff Steele's head like, oh, here you go. Here oh yeah, because yeah, because Metallo is control of Robot Man, and he's like, he's like, tell Superman, he's like, rip my head off. He's like, it's fine. He's like, yeah, as as it's head fine. Yeah, it my happens on a fine. weekly basis. Yeah. Yeah, I do like yeah. how they pointed out the similarities, where it's like, yeah, Robot Man and Metallo are kind of the same because they're a human brain and a robot mm. body. Yeah, cyborgs. Mm. And then he's. I love how he's like in Metallo's in full retreat, and he's like, "Oh yeah, by the while I'm retreating, I'm going to try to kill Negative Woman." Yeah, it is. It was a lot, but I like this one. But it definitely makes me like more curious because I had the setup for what's going on with Supergirl is interesting. Oh yeah, we're going to get those answers next episode. Hmm, might have something to do with that uh, pocket universe we talked about. Mm. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. But yeah, no. The, I, I, as as wonky as like the pacing is and stuff. That yeah, I think this is the best issue of the three. Yeah, the artwork is it's, great. Oh, yeah. it's got the most interesting story beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the Doom Patrol was interesting, but like I said, I'm being dropped in the middle of a book. That I haven't been following. Mm. And let's not even talk about that adventures book. <laughs> yes. The less said about that, the better. Yeah, the annual that never was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Again, it's so weird. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with this era of the Doom Patrol either. I wonder if like either in their issue or this one, if they could have like given like a quick quickie little it's like, well, here's why there's a new members of the Doom Patrol and you know why most of the original oh. members are gone, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it would have been interesting if like they had well, there was no room with all the plot subplots that Burn had in here. <laughs> if you if you had taken out the page of the Daily Planet, the Daily Planet page is like the the Maggie Sawyer page at least and mm -hmm. had done like a page of like a this is Superman fighting alongside the world's strangest heroes the Doom right. Patrol consisting right. of Robot Man Nick, yeah. you know like and then like so if you're just a Superman reader you're like who are these people like yeah we've seen that in Why comics before strange? yeah definitely or were, and, was that was that intentional though where it's like oh see are you interested you don't know these people well go pick up their book. Yeah, and then I think if you wanted to open the book with the the panels, you know, of Superman flying and then seeing Lana, I don't know. Like, you could definitely, you, we definitely could have waited a month or two to run over Brainiac's girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like you mm -hmm. could have, you could have put the Supergirl stuff, but but that I guess it doesn't work if you're going to do that panel of. Clark leaving. I don't. I don't want to even done that. You know what? I would have. I would have. Um. Uh, hey, the Daily Planet. What's up, buddy? Hello. Hello there. Um. I would have. You know what? I would have opened the book like you said the, with the Doom Patrol fight, mm -hmm. and then, uh, had the Doom Patrol fight going on. Maybe cut away to the Daily Planet for a part. Back mm -hmm. to the Doom Patrol stuff. Then about midway through the book, threw in the opening with Supergirl, yes. and then and then um, kept going with the Doom Patrol stuff, and then had the uh, the Supergirl be the last page where she's in the outfit that yeah. we saw Lana in. Yep, and then because that uh, makes put, a good cliffhanger. Yeah, and then put like threw up that last panel at the bottom mm -hmm. at, that's on the last page of her. Um, yeah, of her um, looking at Superman, something so that makes that kind of mystery because then you second guess, like, wait, wasn't that the Lana outfit for the last year? Right. And if you hadn't read it, um, so yeah. 
So that's all I wonder. I'm like, yeah, was that always, always comes the- back to the planet? You're right. Yeah. Always was back that to always, the planet. Yeah. Was that always the intention for that to be Matrix at the end of the Doom Patrol issue, or was that that burn trying to clean that up? Mm. That's a that's a good question. I kind yeah, of, that's a good question. I think maybe yeah. it kind of pans out once we see where the story goes. Yeah. But <laughs> yep, always come back to the planet. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, yeah. So I mean, it was a good, it was a good uh, issue. Over again, it was the best one of the three. But yeah, it just kind of was a a bit of a mess. Yeah, (laughs) that could have been a cut. I mean, that should have been a cutaway when Robot Man's like, "Rip my head off!" Like what? And then cut away. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. That would have been great. Yeah, yeah. And we just get rid of the Milton Fine page about with his. That's what I said. Yeah, that that should have waited a month or two. Yeah, that shouldn't have been in here at all. Yeah. And again, I'm trying to remember how soon Baron Sunday shows up. That whole Maggie Sawyer thing. I'm like, oh God, that oh, has to be at least yeah. six months from now. I'm like, come on, that's, 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 that's two pages they could have. Yeah, that's yeah. two pages they could have saved and just reorganized some of this. Yeah. Um, because to to me, like the last page, the flow of like him flying off, mm-hmm. and then kind of mm. like he's with the Doom Patrol, him flying off, and the bottom page is like Supergirl looking over top of him. I'm like. It yeah. just to me that doesn't flow. It's like you took right to me. Each page needs to be kind of yeah. in the same continuity in the same place, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. Unless unless you're doing something with the story as parallels, but I don't know. It just felt odd. I guess that's mm-hmm. just me. Yeah. No. Was, like just yeah, just I felt the same way. Just like the page where we have the top two panels are cat, middle one Superman mm-hmm. flying home, then yeah. the lawn in the dress, then the little box with. In between these panels, boom, we're in the Doom Patrol scene now. Right. So suddenly, yeah. It's a is a weird page for comic books. Yeah. Yeah, this is a little bit of a mess. Fifty lashes with a wet noodle, Michael Carlin. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, you are welcome. I love your t shirt, Tyler. Oh badly. I got it uh He's last year when DC did uh that big like 85 anniversary that put all the different symbols. The only one I didn't get was the triangle one. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. So you have t-shirts of all the other ones? But yeah, it was like this one. The I bought the Superman Returns one because I used to have that shirt, and then I got the uh the Fleischer. Yeah, you need a bunch of mannequins in the background, put those on. <laughs> That would be cool. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that robot man design is kind of weird. Looks mm. like he's wearing speedos. Yeah, was it just him in speedos? Yeah. He, he, uh, he looks like that for the duration of this this first part of the the series. It, it just struck yeah. me. It, it almost looks like we're going for a robotic Ben Grimm or something. Yeah. And that was kind of the way that he was written for a long time as well. Oh, yeah. 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 I definitely recommend going back, you guys going back and checking out the beginning of that Doom Patrol series and read the first, I think it was the first 25 or so issues. Yeah, I've always meant to go back. Because like I said, I I remember picking up Invasion. I'm like, oh, wait, there's all new Doom Patrol? Hmm. There's some good stuff in there. And like I said, that Steve Lytle artwork in the first five or six issues of that is just gorgeous. Nice. Superman looks a little too happy ripping off uh, Robot Man's head. <laughs> he does. He's venting some aggression. Mm. He's had a rough month. Mm. So nice, Bradley. Oh, nice. Nice, Bradley. Issue four, four part. We're going to get to that next week. Yeah, this is the uh, issue 444. Yeah, the whole Supergirl, the three part Supergirl saga next week. And the final story of Burns' initial run. Yep. Mm. That's right. We're going to be closing out some burn here. That's it. All right. Burn. All right. All right. Anything else on these? Uh, I think, no, I think we covered it all. Yeah. This video set up. Yeah, oh, y'all have you. it. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Capes and lunatics in full effect. It's a, it's a it's a uh, special rare thing a bunch of white guys on the internet talking about stuff 
Uh, hey, like I said, man, what uh, my new favorite <laughs> saying is, we don't have midlife crisis anymore. We just start podcasts. Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> right. That. That's right. That's right. Instead of a mistress in a sports car, yeah, you start podcasting. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, start podcasting, just reminisce about the days of old. Uh, Talking about yeah. phone oh, booths. So we did. We did. Remember the price, the price of comics back then. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Those rocking chairs are going. We got. We got to. We got to do an episode that's special, just sitting on the front porch somewhere, rocking. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Do you remember? I remember back when Roger Stern wrote Superman. Do you remember seventy-five cents comics? Petrus, Petrus, Petrus Farmer. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's good. I remember back when they wouldn't say Maggie Sawyer was gay. He just had a female roommate. Uh, I, c- I can only afford one bed. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So yes, like I said, next uh, next week we're gonna cover yeah the Matrix saga here from Superman twenty one and twenty two and Adventures of Superman four forty four. There you go, Brad. Yes, and then uh, as I uh, for those of you who may may be new here, yes, because we've got a good bit uh, watching here right now. Uh, so then the two weeks after that, me, me and Kristen will talk some Nightwing on Nightwing news, including uh, one week will be all the new the new Nightwing and Titans issues. Oh, that's right. This one starts at uh, Tom Taylor's uh, first issue of his uh, the final arc of his Nightwing run. Ooh, the final one. All nice. in grace. And yeah, I, it felt like he took a, a break from Nightwing because I was I was making sure I didn't miss any. Um, it's not like it just like there was like when he started doing Titans, it just felt like Nightwing was like no, he was mm-hmm. he was the one he was the one Titans. Like I know he had a different artist for a while, but yeah, Bruno Redondo's the, back. And... The 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 pirate thing was me. Eh, yeah, it was yeah, it was all right. It's like he oh, put all of his talents towards the Titans. Yes, but this last arc, Justin, check out that art, man. There's there's a beard. Dick Grayson's growing a beard. Oh really? Oh, oh. Mm. yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I'll check that out. This old man voice. I remember when Valley and Comics was out selling. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I think Ray can feel you on that. <laughs> uh, here and then, uh, and then next month for Superman, we're gonna be covering Adventures of Superman four forty five and Superman twenty three, which Justin will be back to join us. I'll for be back for that one. Silver Banshee's yeah. in that Superman twenty three. Silver Banshee appearance, my girl Siobhan. Yes, and then the other episode that month will be Adventures of Superman 446 and Superman 24. So, yes, three issues next week, and then next the two episodes next month, they'll only be two issues each. So, all right, and for you new people, uh, yes, please send in feedback for all of that stuff. We're kind of going in order, so again, you kind of know where we're going. So, send in feedback, and how do you do that? Uh, you can always email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Uh, and you can always find all things CAPES, Lunatics episode, social media, merchandise. Pick up new CAPES, Lunatics merchandise for uh, our new logos. Uh, we have a Cash App link. So if, if you want to be nice and just rain random money on us. Make it rain. <laughs> As well, can I say, like we're, uh, we're a young girl <laughs> dancing our way through college. Yes, just rain random money. <laughs> Honest. make it rain <laughs> and of course the patreon where Wilf and i are always completely uncensored uh how we, we don't know what we're doing half the time so yes uh but yeah it's always a crazy fun time over there so please uh sub- subscribe to our patreon and you can find everything at tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network that's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network more vicious and brutal than ever <laughs> All right, and Tyler, I think you talk Superman somewhere else. Where would that be? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, besides your house and your workplace <laughs> and the comic shop, where else do you talk Superman? In the car. Don't forget the car. Um, yeah. Over on Krypton Report, we talk Superman and all things DC. You can find us on uh, any of your podcast platforms, on all of the social media, on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of them. Come say hi. Check out our newest episode. 
Um, this is live, so we literally just posted a new uh, reaction episode of the dropping of the new Superman suit for the new film. Like that just went up. So check that out. Seconds before love. we went on live, we're live with this show. <laughs> love the Daily Planet. Good people over there. Check out the Daily Planet's website. I guess the Very Daily nice. Planet says love the Krypton Report podcast. I'm tired of knowing everything. All right. Now for this Justin the Owl, who, yes, will be taking a break here and will be joining us every so often. Like I said, mm. he'll be coming for an episode next month. Uh, you can hear him here. Well, you can hear him here every so often on uh, Electric Mullet. Uh, hear him once a month on We Are the Night, the Batman, the Batman podcast. podcast. At the end of every month, talking Asriel with me. Uh, I can hear him once a month. At, well, and on Capes of Lunatics, you hear him once a month on Electric or energon universe with energon universe yes he likes over. energy energon yes. electric yeah that's right gamma charged i, I see a right. pattern yes. that's right so yes <laughs> all the new transformers and gi joe you can hear him well also now once a month it's locked in once a month it's X locked in x-men classics uh where we talk something uh some classic x-men story of course and of course every yeah. week on marvel tales we talk something more different Marvel every week. So yes, and that's not all because this this uh, this man is the king of podcasting. So where else do you podcast? That's right. I have more shows. If you want to hear me every month, you can hear me and Russell over on Gamma Charge, the strongest podcast there is, where we talk about the Incredible Hulk and the sensational She Hulk. And this month we have a couple of special episodes. Actually, we are doing a crossover with the Bronze Age Monsters podcast. Matt and Jacob are going to join us to talk about the Incredible Hulk versus it, the Living Colossus. Oh, nice! And we're doing a special live stream episode as a benefit for the Hero Initiative, which is a great, right. great cause. If anybody doesn't know what that is do go check that out and please donate if you can and we are also going to unveil a very special interview with the author of the incredible hulk monthly comic book philip kennedy johnson that will be available later this month but we can also be found with uh the high priest of Kanchu ray over on predator and prey the Outer Podcast, where every month we talk about the latest Predator comics offered from Marvel, as well as the classic Dark Horse comics. And last mm. but not least, my solo show, The Lost Library of Legends, is still chugging right along. And after I'm done getting over the last of my allergies, I hope to record the second part of my two-part retrospective on a 1994 series, Forgotten from Marvel called black wolf We're going back to the 90s here bitch <laughs> nice it's me, your old pal the owl <laughs> i love dr drunken justin <laughs> <laughs> the gift that keeps giving me oh yeah that has, that has to be at least an annual thing yeah definitely try to get lil to do she did one once and i'm trying to get yeah her. i remember that yeah i'm gonna eat this up <laughs> with a fork and spoon all right <laughs> Uh, thank you for joining us. That's a, that's a nice, healthy number there watching us. All right. So, yes, come back next week. Yes, Tyler and I will talk. Maybe we get some James Cole. Maybe we'll start. You know, he's, always he's always out fighting Washington crime, doing good stuff. Pouring <laughs> up the Washington Monument or something. <laughs> Norris <laughs> James is out busy. You didn't know that James was actually John Cena's stunt double for Peacemaker, so he, he he's pretty busy. That's true. I didn't see him either. He's here, right next to me. Oh, that's right. Yeah. All right. So yes, come back next week and we'll, uh, learn all about this new Supergirl. But until then, join us for truth, justice, and the mullet way. The mullet way. We'll forget about the desert.